um, you know, like a murder of crows or like a gang of chimpanzees. What do you call what do you call a plethora of mics? I'm going to call it a gangbang, a gangbang of mics. <laughs> I suppose blow bang would work as well. <laughs> Three, two, one. I feel slightly like an adult film star at this point because of the amount of phallic objects pointed at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> And it applies to people named Mike as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out there. The Mike's of the world. It's quite funny to see. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's such a weird world that we live in, man. Like, um, when I, uh, when this whole Trump thing happened over the weekend, um, I took a look at it and I was just like, I said to Melissa, oh my goodness, like we were living in such a strange, strange world. You know, like in terms of, you know, there's that old Robert De Niro film called Wag the Dog. Wag the Dog. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah. Um, it's all about like how the news is constructed in a certain way. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's crazy because it's like, I think it was in the 90s, it came out in the 90s. And they basically talk how they like stage um, this war uh, in the back lots of like Hollywood spaces and whatnot um not to say that you know i'm making any implications with regards to the trump thing cia if you're listening um <laughs> but more but more rather the fact that like so much of our reality is documented oh, yeah. like everything is documented man and it's and it's crazy it's it's it's, it's a it's a it's a very weird space <laughs> i have a blow bang of mics currently positioned in my direction and we are here for the stories of the games we play we we are back <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after an awfully long hiatus and uh, countless struggles with software not the software we enjoy the software we don't uh, which we shall call it hardware hard indeed the way, hard indeed the way is the hard uh, the way is. I must, I must tell you about a, a story that I've gotten just from today. I know that we, we want to get into our main topics, uh, which we will do in a second. But uh, today I went uh, laptop shopping uh, for a brother's friend's wife. Um, and she wanted a particular laptop because uh, she wants to start teaching. And I was looking the entire week for laptops. And I, f I finally found one which would match to her requirements because she needed quite a high spec laptop. And uh, I went all the way out to Hatfield, Pretoria, where I was listening to your, um, your beautiful <laughs> voice messages. Um, you, sir, are a connoisseur, or rather, how shall I put this, an auteur of uh, voice notes, if I should put it that way. And um, I met up with this guy, and it was so funny, and it's these synchro destinies that I always kind of encounter, which I always find so strange. Um, he is... Uh, selling laptops as like a um, sort of side hustle but his main hustle is that he's a VFX and video game designer so he's a video he's a VFX artist and he is a, he also works within the gaming industry and uh, we got into this little like maybe 10 minute um, little conversation about gaming uh, while I was uh, uh, trying to lift the laptop off of him oh, man, I wasn't see yeah, this is this is quite. Uh, I, I love these little side quests because uh, earlier you mentioned that you were going to Pretoria for yes. a nice trial. I'm like, okay, yeah. you know, he's doing stuff. Um, and now you mentioned laptop hunting, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, oh, he went there to get tech. Ooh, <laughs> that's something to look forward to. Ooh, right. And now you double down. Yeah. You double down. You're like, no, no, no. There's more. Uh, <laughs> This guy is a VFX artist and he works in the games industry. Yeah, and it's so funny because like, you know, you know, both of us having a supreme love for film uh, and ultimately also a love for video games. I find these weird synchronicities wherever we go, where you, where you discover that people are so <laughs> affiliated with both of these passions. And, you know, it didn't help the fact that um, 
you know, across the road where we were meeting, we were meeting at Hatfield Square and right across the road, you know, it's kind of within like the university district and right across the road is just this giant building and forgive me i don't know what it was and somebody's um, probably going to comment and yeah. say you know <laughs> that place is actually you know the place where they do yeah. a lot of drama but it literally had the words drama on it and i was like oh interesting you know like in these giant letters and I, I was just curious as to what that was i wasn't too curious because i obviously didn't ask anybody i just went back to my car after getting the laptop but um <laughs> you know, because sometimes you're like, oh, it's a beautiful sign of the universe speaking to me. Because when you when you when you when you scratch too hard, sometimes you know you scratch away the the beautiful veneer of what the sign actually means to you. You know, when you you know, as uh, Javier Bardem says in the Counselor, is gynecological. You know, you don't want to get down there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you still want yeah. it to be romantic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, keep keep. Keep the lingerie on, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Speaking of which, um, so I recently finished The Last of Us Part 2, uh, according to your your uh, recommendation, rather. Um, because, as you know, uh, in parking lot conversations that you and I have had in the past, as well as, you know, various other talks about gaming, I was trying to avoid The Last of Us Part 2 like the plague. Because I played, <laughs> the, I played The Last of Us Part 1 and it was a harrowing, uh, uncomfortable experience, which <laughs> I did not want to return back to that world. I was like, why would anybody want to do this twice? <laughs> you know, I was like, no. Um, and and you were very very uh, uh, um, you know as you are you you know sort of you're very warm and welcoming back to the world of video games as you ushered me back um, so much so that it actually facilitated this podcast. But at the same time, uh, you kept on saying like you know this game is at the top of my list and you should play it. And Charles, thank you, thank you for taking my stubborn ass all the way to the water and making me drink. Uh, because, uh, as I said to you in a very short voice note, um, again, to do another movie quote from Benicio Del Toro, it is magnificent, you know? Um, yeah. Obviously, visiting the game four years after it came out, I know that I'm late to the party, but my goodness, there's no such thing as old or new art. There's only art that you've engaged with and art that you haven't. And um, this was a fantastic piece of art, I must tell you. Just wow. Just wow. wow. Yeah, no, um, I, I, I like that response. Cause I, I, rem I, you know, there's certain things you understand that now I know, I know what, what he went through. Um, not necessarily everything, um, but there are just certain experiences where it's like, uh -uh. If, if you haven't been on this experience, then that's one thing, but if you have, right it's it's, ooh, it's <laughs> yeah it's the stuff man it's that's the stuff that you know you just it's the nod where you can sit in silence look at each other be like yep absolutely absolutely let's get the elephant out of the room first and foremost right so stories of the games we play it wouldn't be this podcast if we don't talk about what happened in the surroundings of this podcast with the surroundings of us playing this game. But here's the first thing, right? So I knew that Joel dies. I knew yeah. it because it was unavoidable, right? I'm playing this game four years afterwards. Uh, you know, I'm on YouTube. I know what people were upset about. And look, it happens very early on in the game. So it's, you know, spoilers. Sorry if I've spoiled anything for you. But here's the thing. This is, there's, there are a couple of things I want to talk about with regards to this game and a couple of things that I want to ask you that I had, I had these questions playing the game, but this notion of Joel dying was quite prevalent because I actually bought this game for my brother first, uh, because I still didn't want to play it, uh, but I wanted him to play it and I wanted him to des <laughs> describe it to me. It's like, it's like, make love to Monica Bellucci and then tell me how it was. Uh, <laughs> So I might live vicariously through you. Um, 
and 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 you've been a you've been a very very sort of motivational and like no play the games will lead you are you are a gamer you love these things and um, i remember you said this to me just before I, I dipped into death stranding you said how much inspiration are you denying yourself by not engaging with something that you love and it's something i remind myself of so much um in you know sort of when i'm playing these games and just the utter joy that they give me um so here's the thing uh, uh, when I was looking for the game for my brother, uh, I walked into a local BT Games and uh, I was perusing the shelves because I was hoping that it would be on special because they were running the special at one point where it was very close to the release of the game or at least like within the first year. I think because of the blowback and the controversy that, you know, was really sort of, you know, invented and uh, and and uh, overrun really, if if I if I may say so, um, that they dropped the, the the price of the game quite a bit. I think it was like three ninety nine on a special, and this is at the height of it, you know, sort of coming out during the the pandemic. Um, and I walked into the BT Game Store looking for this particular special, and the uh, gentleman came over to me and said to me what are you looking for well i said look i'm looking for the last of us and he's like why do you want that game and i was like wow <laughs> <laughs> passion <laughs> I was, yeah, yeah. The passion of this individual um i was like i was like this is so strange i'm in a gaming shop asking you for a game and you are trying to get me not to buy the game and i was like wow this is why Steam was created. This is why people don't buy physical media anymore. And as big as a physical media guy I am, that was the moment I had this thing because what followed Charles was this man literally having a moment with me. Somebody he had not met where he's like, don't buy that game. You should buy that game. And, I, and, and all I was doing, I was standing there and you know me, I love to play devil's advocate. Me having known that Joel dies within the first 10 minutes of the game, I asked him, why? You know, <laughs> very innocently, you know, pretending to be like, pretending to be a complete Luddite, like in terms of like, I, I don't know what this gaming stuff is, sir. Please explain it to me. Because <laughs> Day one. Yeah, I, I'm curious. I'm curious. What is it that tinkled you? What is it that touched the nerve with you? Knowing full well what it is, right? And, and I just wanted this dude to wig out even more because I was like, if you're not going to let me get the game, you might as well entertain me. So he's like, he's like, you can't do that to a legend and I was like whoa <laughs> and I was like what do you mean again you know just kind of stoking the fires you know I was like what do you mean and he's like you can't do that to a legend you, you, you just can't do that to a legend you just can't do that and I said this thing to him which which even you know my wife Melissa looked at me like why why would you say such a thing but I'm quite known for being an instigator when it comes to uh, interpersonal dynamics because I'm always curious as to what people will say within different contexts it's just the screenwriter in my head I just want to I just want to get um <laughs> I just want to get a, a piece of dialogue that I can steal and put into a script it's like Aaron Sorkin says right he says I once walked past um, a, <laughs> a, a, a couple who were like you can't get the drop on Jesus <laughs> and he was like I'm using that <laughs> I'm using that line He's like, he's, you can't, you can't write that. That's that like, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I, I said to him, I said to him, well, if you make it, you can break it. And he just looked at me as if I was the devil, Charles. He looked at me as if I was the devil. And he was just like, how do you? <gasps> and, I, and I knew, I knew I could never go back to that store. And I haven't since, because I think that my picture's up there and they're like, do not serve this man <laughs> because he thrives on, he thrives on trauma. He thrives on, and, and having known, known what it was, because he didn't let me know what it was, but I left it without the game. And, and uh, Melissa, like, we, we, we constantly go into one of the two stores at Eastgate Mall, right? It's, it's, there's one called Game For You and the other one was BT Games. 
and we often go in there and there's like the strangest characters that we meet in there and we, we just listen to the dialogues that's happening there and when she left that store she was like what happened because obviously i wasn't going to let her know what happens to joel um you know the, yeah. the 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 series hasn't hadn't come out yet i didn't even know they were making a series but thank god i didn't say that because and and in touching on on sort of the hbo show she watched that hbo show and i think it was by episode four she just she had that silence that i had voice noted you about where she was just like yeah. no no and i said what what is the matter having known what happens in the first game she says no video game writing can't be this good it just can't be this good. Like, um, I forget, what is the name? Is it Henry? Henry and his brother? I think that happens around episode four in the series. Yeah. Yeah, where, you know, we, we has to, we has to kill his brother. And she was just like, no. She's like, does this happen in the games? And I was like, verbatim. It happens verbatim. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's like beat for beat. This is what happens. And she, and she was like, you're lying. And I remember when we first met, I encouraged her to play the game. Because I was like, if you think you know what games are, The Last of Us really is one of those challenger games which redefine what you think a game is, right? And I've been speaking for a minute here and I want you to dip in because I, I want to get your take on that. Oh yeah, it's quite a bit. Mm. Um, what happened with me um, so after it gets announced um, this is the other game that I just go on like a trailer binge leading up to when the game's going to release um, it's just I don't know it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like a constant reminder that day mm. something to, to look forward to and closing in to the, the release day um I, I don't pre-order. Uh, I think it's it's, it's it's a little bit silly in my opinion. Yeah. Um, however, um, the the day launches, if it's a game I like, I'm there, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm there the day it releases because yeah, I've 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 enjoyed the journey. I've enjoyed the process of of that anticipation of yeah. Oh we. Yeah. But I did myself a favor. I went on an internet blackout <laughs> for The Last of Us Part 2. Yeah. Um, so, um, what's that one channel? There's a few channels uh, that, you know, they get like early access, the reviews mm -hmm. and all that stuff. I'm like, nope, I'm going to see y'all in about a month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and what was interesting is um, this time around, I didn't have um, my, my younger cousin. Uh, who was there for the first one uh, just in terms of when I bought the game we started the game and you know there's a story there as well yeah. this time around he's in Durban so you know it is what it is um, and I went into the game almost uh, you know like I knew nothing outside of obviously the stuff they released in trailers but that didn't do justice to what you actually experience because it's it's completely different from what i thought it would be <laughs> yeah and you mentioned that you knew you knew about joel uh i i did not uh, i i had no idea oh geez and it, it was it was so oh man it's like it's like you know when you drop something heavy into like a big body of water that sounder makes like boom. oh my goodness right and because I mean, at that point, um, it's you're playing as, as as Joe, I think, and then you switch to to Abby. Yeah, you. I All think right? you, you start the game playing. Uh, um, you start the game playing with Ellie, and then it switches to Abby. So you encounter Joe. So they do this whole like, um, what is the best way I can describe it in cinematic terms? They, it's basically, oh, you're in for a show tonight, like that little feeling when you run into it because they have you kind of run through this horde and you're at your wit's end and he saves you. So as a player, <laughs> as a player, you're like, my friend, my friend is here, guys. <laughs> He's my friend, this guy, I know him. <laughs> and can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? <laughs> Having known what's going to happen, 
It's a very strange experience going into that knowing what's going to happen because Abby does this look when you run into Joel and he tells her, my name is Joel. And it's, you're on the sticks, so they don't go to a cutscene, you're on the sticks and she turns kind of to camera and she has this look in her eye. And I'm like, oh, naughty dog, you naughty, naughty, naughty dog. <laughs> I was like, the poor people that you set up like this. Because my, my brain, my filmmaking brain is going at 100 miles an hour when that happens. Because I'm, I'm studying. Because I'm like, oh crap, this is, this is complete setup, right? It's like, I, I know for a fact, I'm part of the knowing party, which is just like, oh, this, you're setting me up for like something bad. Now, the crazy thing about this is, Melissa's sitting next to me watching this unfold and she has no idea. She just watched the series. She loves Pedro Pascal. She loves Joel. She loves the story. She loves that relationship. It's the, you know, the, um, what is it? Is it wolf and cub? That's what they call it kind of story. And she's in. And she's like, Joel, when she saw him, she's like, hey, it's Joel. And, it, and it's Tommy, you know, cause Tommy's also there. Anyway, <laughs> proceed, proceed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, I can imagine. But now it, it it happened so quickly, right? From my memory, uh, that 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 incident where it's just oh, because there's that cut from one of the trailers uh, with the uh, Ellie, mm -hmm. where she she's pleading, you know, oh shit, please don't, right? And what? I know I did this where in my mind I just I blocked it out I was like hmm I don't know could be somebody else hmm yeah I wonder it, it, it just doesn't <laughs> it, it was a complete deletion that, that filter was up I'm like there's no way they, <laughs> that that was gonna happen yeah like, and, and, and I like that you mentioned that that horde that chases Abby because now your brain is so focused on other things and <laughs> so by the time that cutscene kicks in, you're thinking it's a it's, it's a moment of, you know, relief. Yeah. Like, oh, a little. Oh, let's just catch our breath a little bit. Oh no, <laughs> we ain't ca Oh, <laughs> and bring out the golf club. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then, and then Ellie shows up, and you just like, uh uh. No. At this point, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. Um. Uh, I, I don't feel like I, c I can trust this going to happen. So um, I'm already on the roller coaster. All right, let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah. And then they just double down on that naughty dog. You know, they mention that it's a brutal world. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's just like that really happened. Yeah. Right? And and <laughs> you know they 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 move on uh, in terms of um, I think it's a, it's a time lapse thing, a time jump. You don't know exactly what you're going to play from that point on. Because, yeah. Because, you know, the stuff that you enjoyed from the first one, they, they, they get rid of that immediately from that first impactful set piece where it's just like, okay, now what? Like, yeah. It's clearly a different game. Yeah, right? absolutely. It's, it's, and you're just like, oof, and... <laughs> Oh man, there's certain parts that I was but, ready for. So my consternation and my hesitation to play this game was fixed in that moment. I was in, when Joel dies, I was like, aha, you've got me. You've got me from a, from a storytelling perspective, because if the first one's based on Cormac McCarthy's The Road, right? And even watching that movie with Viggo Mortensen, The Road, it's harrowing, man. Like you never want to, oh, yeah. no one, you don't go over to somebody's house and they're like, hey, you want to watch The Road? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> you know, no one, no one goes, oh my God, the road. <laughs> you watch that film once. And I remember watching that film, not having read the novel goes, what type of sick person reads this novel <laughs> and doesn't put it down? <laughs> this is not a page turner. This is a put downer. You know, this is like, this is like, no. Um, 
Uh, and funny enough, Cormac McCarthy spoke about spoke spoke about uh, th this uh, this uh, sort of proclivity of seeking comfort. That you know, in speaking about you know, sort of the clerk at the BT game store, speaking about how people have reacted to it, he, he speaks about you know this particular quote. And I think I sent you that video, which contains that quote, which is the, the death of cinematic curiosity, which is this idea that we don't want to be uncomfortable anymore. Um, you know, and, and I think that The Last of Us Part 2 is such an interesting game because it isn't comfort food at all. <laughs> no, 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 it is not. Um, I, 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 that's part of the, like, the strong appeal for me in the first one where, you know, if I tell people that oh, this is a really, really fun game and I'm very enthusiastic about it, almost playful, right? Yeah. You assume that I'm talking about Super Mario or something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's how I think I sell it. Yeah. Right? And then you, you get into it, and it's like you still enjoy it like you would enjoy a Mario Kart. Yeah, game, right? you do. There's, there's fun. There's fun, right? Mechanics wise, right? And now you mentioned curiosity, and you're like, you're so curious, even though, you know, that environment, that world that they built is, 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 is terrifying. You're like, yeah. why would I want to get past this level ever again? Yeah. After I finish this game. <laughs> I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But that's the genius of it, right? Because there's there's two things I want to speak about speak about with you, right? The first, which you have to remind me of, which is narrative dissonance, which is very much within video games. And then the second being this idea that the the curiosity is what gets you to move through the game. And even move move throughout the game as well, because the the amount of exploration you can kind of do within that space and I, and I told you this when I first started the game reminded me very much of like a Silent Hill or Silent Hill 2 where you've got like the map and you're going to different spaces and you're finding little hidden treasures but it's not like it's not like any other game where it feels like side questy uh, or that you feel this sense of dread constantly and th yeah. that's the brilliance in terms of the tonality because one of the other things that I picked up from a, just a subtextual level was, okay, if this, if this game's about cycles of violence, right? Which is really sort of the big thing I wanted to talk to you about. If the, if the main theme of this game is cycles of violence, why is it that your, your, um, your uh, how should I say this, motivating me to be violent in order to get kind of like the trinkets and the treasures because you'll often find that when you kind of go into like a shop front that's not really on the sort of narrative path in order to get more ammo or to collect something often it's filled with enemies and i kept questioning this about the game which was like is it that the the the, ga the game developers want me to be violent in this game as, as either a reflection point or is it narrative dissonance? Is it this idea that you're commenting on violence while still um, sort of initiating violent circumstances? And I know this sounds like a highfalutin theme here, but it's really, I think, at the core of what uh, how other games are narratively dissonant in terms of like for instance a lot of people have criticized like the uncharted series where like nathan drake is supposed to be you know sort of this gung-ho sort of uh, you know uh, indiana jones type person yet he's like mowing down 300 people through the course of every game and it's like is he a mass murderer or is he you know sort of uh, michael douglas from romancing the stone you know what i'm saying like and and I think that The Last of Us 2, and this is just my opinion and I would love to hear, hear yours, is, is such a great use of that disconnect. It's such a great, where they've actually employed it as a mechanic to get you to be more violent in order to comment on our obsession and curiosity with violence. Oh, what do you think? Yeah, what do you think? Um, I, I never saw it from that point of view. Um, although I, 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 I do see the commentary on, on violence. Um, again, the word brutal kept coming up, right? It's a, it's a brutal world. And, yeah. you know, only after I played the game a few times and um, I'm indulging in it as a, as a, 
like a pastime like oh let me let me just look at this you know these few pages of this comic book and then you read the whole thing or oh the matrix is on let me just watch 10 15 minutes and then you just watch the whole thing right yeah uh, so it got to that stage where i i enjoyed that game to that point so now i can think about uh, the, these these type of topics but maybe not so well versed in the language yeah and when you look at the settings for the first one right just in terms of once you finish the game you can play it at a harder mode and then i think the, the last one is some other crazy survival mode i think it's called no yeah grounded there it is yeah yeah and without the h you you know the, without that without the hud and without all kinds of, and i'm just like like there are masochists out there that are like yes <laughs> I, I want exactly to go play cool. that. <laughs> and, you know, you mentioned now this, this dissonance where I, I, it never even occurred to me to, to play it at that level. I, I, you know, I was so content being able to use the, that, what's that listening skill? Yes, to, yeah, um, it's, the, it's the, the listening. It's called listening. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to to abuse that, you know, because you just came out of an area full of clickers, right? Let's say, right? Maybe get a cutscene, and maybe they just jump straight into an, another area. But now, the, uh, the the enemy AI is different; it's people, and you just have to feel like, all right? With the clickers, it's easy. Right with the, with the smash them against the wall with the bricks, the stabbing. Right, it, <laughs> you kind of just run over them, like you said, like like Nathan Drake and just mowing down three hundred people. And it's like, yep, but I'm also a movie star, <laughs> right? <laughs> normal Tuesday at <laughs> 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 uh, So now, with the click is. I don't feel anything other than, you know, relief uh, just in terms of I got past that area. But now with the, with the, 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 the human a- NPCs, the AI, right? And some of the, the finishing moves, right? Like, I, I'll, I'll always do like a little double take. Just be like, yo, I, I, <laughs> I really killed that guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I constantly felt like that. And, and, <laughs> And here's the thing, here's the thing, and, I, and I'm saying this with a full disclaimer, right? I know that a lot of like, you know, sort of people out there are like, you know, there are a lot of like chicks in this game, you know, this is like a chick game. But there are a lot of women uh, um, NPCs in this game, man. And they were murdered at the hands of Ellie and Abby so many times while I was playing. To the point where I, I myself went like, another another woman? I'm killing another one? Because a lot of the times I'm like, oh, it's a dude. And then I grab them and then hit square really quickly because I just don't want anybody else to shoot me for the umpteenth time and me to like see the the reload screen. Um, I'm like, oh my God, like this, this is, this is violent. Like, you know, there's no point where you start getting comfortable with it. Like there's no point, like, you know, you play Mortal Kombat and you know, Mortal Kombat, you know, is a really sort of tongue in cheek a lot of the times because some of the stuff is so incredibly like, you know, sort of hyper surreal. But with this, um, I found myself just kind of, you know, uh, 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 you know, engaging with it and just being utterly shocked, shocked by the, by the, the, the violence that I was perpetuating. And that's why I say it's such an, in, a, a genius mechanic to, to put in, in a game where you yourself are actually looking at your actions, uh, as an active player in this brutal world you know you're not you're not you don't have that luxury of going well it wasn't me you know um or you don't have that luxury where you're saying like oh you know i I had no part to play or it's taking place in a cutscene. a lot of the brutality takes place sort of on the sticks and um i will say one thing there was one clicker that i was uh that i felt really bad for him and Melissa laughed very hard at me when I said this, because I was playing the, um, it's that apartment, that infested apartment block um, that uh, Abby goes down with Lev. 
and that scene in particular is phenomenal by the way um, but I came around the corner and there was this clicker just kind of standing there and it looked like it was deep in thought and I was just like I looked at it for a second I was like ah oh, I've been there I've been there like it's not making any noise it's just kind of standing there like look like it was daydreaming and I shifted it obviously and then we continued down that harrowing uh, apartment block but it was it was it, it was it, you know it's it, it, this 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 thing uh, this this mechanic combined with the type of immersion and the attention to detail and I said this to my brother playing it you know because he told me what the budget was for for the last of us and I just said um, you can you can feel every little bit of every dollar that went into this game um, there's such a lot of care that went into it if I were to look at this game from a from a from a holistic point of view I found myself you know when you first play with Abby and having known that Joel dies I'm like uh oh I know what they're doing here and having heard sort of the commentary about her character and even you know you know even the voice actor getting death threats because of what happens in the game I th I thought that I was going to hate Abby you know I thought that I was you know I thought this is what they were setting up right they were setting up a villain you're right it's like you know you play the villain and you play the heroine but in actual fact what is crazy about it is i found that ellie was much more the villain in my eyes and that i was empathizing much more with abby and it's a it's a fantastic thing to do it's kind of like a terminator one terminator two type of thing that happens where you know arnold's the villain in the first one and then he becomes the hero in the next one yeah they kind of did the reverse with ellie because on the times that i was playing with ellie i was just like ellie like the 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 there's no narrative dissonance with her she's she's just be, she's just becoming this like uh uh sort of bloodthirsty mass murdering person on a vengeance and especially so like by the time that you reach the aquarium where you're like killing dogs and killing pregnant ladies and, and i'm like my god like ellie and that switch blade is is one of the most terrifying things i could ever <laughs> imagine coming across no exactly like do, do you know how many throats where you're just like <laughs> wow like the, the fact that you can remember that i mean there's 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 an animation where you with the with the one of the rifles right somebody's is running out coming from behind a pillar um, um and you just take them out right wow but they don't just drop and then disappear they've got more animation where you can hear the gurgling yeah. and oh. and you're just like wow but you can't stop because bullets are flying and it's exactly and you're like yeah 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 and it's, it's so interesting that you, you you mentioned this empathy that you feel for abby uh, because it, it's actually it, it's it's very clear it's not subtle it's like no actually yeah i mean you know she did yeah. she didn't make Joel, but come on. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean. Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing for me, Charles. This is the thing that I said, because kind of after Melissa watched Joel get killed, right? I was like, do you want to keep watching? And she was like, no, I'd much rather kind of watch the, the season two when it comes out, because I kind of know what happens, but I, I don't want the story spoiled. And she's absolutely right, because the story really begins from there. But at the same time, like the, the, the what I love about the way that they treated Joel was Joel, Joel's not living anymore. He's like alone. Ellie's not talking to him. She's off like, you know, making out with Dina and doing all of these different things. And you, I really felt for him as this sort of father figure wanting to connect. Yet, you know, uh, Ellie was in that very much like, you're not my dad type of, you know, yeah. <laughs> type of space. And, and, even, and even Melissa agreed. She was like a daddy for a daddy. Like, that's the way it goes, <laughs> you know. And if you don't appreciate your dad, like, it doesn't matter. And, and you know what's funny about it? I think that through the first game, Joel became, became gamer's daddies or the Internet's daddy. Right? Yeah. And, and I think that with Abby taking him away, they felt what Ellie felt, right? 
But I was fascinated by the choice of Abby sparing Ellie and Tommy. And, and there's a line of dialogue where she finds Ellie back in the movie theater where she's like, I spared you and you wasted it. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, wait, hold on a second. And I remember because that's where the game switches and you start playing with Abby. And then you're left to reel over that little bit of dialogue. And they're very clever because they introduce it to Abby in the stadium and her community and, you know, throwing the ball for the dog. And then you're like, oh, shit, I, I kill that dog. As Ellie, I kill that dog. And then they do this beautiful thing where, like, that thought comes to you. You're like, oh, God, I kill that person and I kill that person and I kill that person and that person. And I was like, oh, goodness, because then you start actually because this is why I say Abby is right. Because you, you actually start seeing that that yes the the killing the the cycles of violence is very apparent because i mean this is what neil Druckmann spoke about and it's something that i really want to get to in terms of the sort of meat of this conversation and i'm trying to cozy up to it because it's a very difficult conversation to have it's like if we continue cycles of violence it will never end but it's only abby that stops it twice stops the cycles of violence twice where she spares Ellie twice. Right in the ending, Ellie spares her, but it's only through, a, through remembering Joel different. But what's crazy about it is, is that where you see the interactions with Joel, apart from the birthday, you know, sort of um, rocket type of thing where he gives her the tape, their interactions are very, very strained. And you cannot help but feel for this Joel who's reaching out and not getting this reciprocation from Ellie. And then you have Abby, who has, a, for me, has a greater, a greater character arc, if you, if you don't mind me saying, than Ellie does. Because Ellie's like a tour de force for me in the game. She's actually like, she's, she's a villain in a sense that she, like you say, her with that switchblade is terrifying. And I, and I think it's an, interesting, it's an interesting approach to a character from that. But this is why I find myself empathizing with Ellie because Emily, Ellie does, I'm the, sorry, with Abby, because Abby does yeah. the most growth, growth over the game. And, and this is the conversation that I want to have. I want to have a, a particular very hard conversation here, Charles, but I want to get, get your idea on that because that's how it felt for me. I'm not saying that that's how it is because these, this is stories of the games we play. And I really like to get your thoughts on that. And this is, you know, what I've been, uh, uh, you know, they, they talk about like, you know, sexual retention. Um, I've been gamingly retenting myself up to this point, hence that I'm being so, you know, sort of verbal about it, but I want to get your thoughts. Mm, where to start? Mm, mm. You know, with, with Joel specifically, um, uh, because at some point when you, when you mentioned feeling bad for him because he's, you know, um, he's not connecting with uh, Ellie, <laughs> right? Yeah. right? I, not I, my dad, Joel. I, I was 120% on Joel's side. I'm like, Ellie, you teenage bread, get out of my house. I feed you, I clothe you, you <laughs> ungrateful piece of, you know, and I'm just not having it because I re remember uh, the first game, right? And what happens in the first 20 minutes of that game? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah, the daughter dying. We're going to come back to that. Please remind me of that because we're going to come back to that. And you're just like, that, that entire game, you're thinking, you know, Joel is like trying to avoid this thing. This, yeah. this, this particular dynamic, especially, you know, yeah. he's, he's, he, yeah, it's, it's, it's yo, man. You get you every time, right? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> So then, obviously, now with the, the second one, when um, Ellie is confronting Joel about what happened with the fireflies, etc., etc., yeah, um, you're like, yo, Ellie, just just let it go, bro. Let it go, man. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just <laughs> some things don't need to be said. And she goes on this whole, um, she had a purpose thing. I don't know. I kind of, I might have internalized this idea in my head, but you know, she, go she, for it. she wanted to. to to make that sacrifice, you know, she wanted to be a hero type of thing. I'm like, I'm like really? Yeah. Really? And yeah. But What's interesting though is that in the second game, she commits just as much mass murder as he did. Oh in yeah. The hospital. Yeah. I, I like the yeah. perspective of um, when you're playing as Abby, and 
Tommy is, is the sniper across the, the way. You know, he's, I think he's parallel to you on a bridge or oh, something. shit. Yeah. Right? And you realize, actually, you know, even, even though we like these characters, they are some scary, scary human beings. <laughs> they are. <laughs> You know, you know, when, what is the dude's name? The sort of Latino guy, I forget his name, because he's along with you, right? On that sniper section. And you come to like him so much and they off him in such an ugly way, Charles. <laughs> it's such an, even like, like it, it's not even as dramatic as Joel's. They're like, oh, here's the sexy Latino guy. And you're like, great, awesome. I like him. He's really friendly. He's got a great accent. He's got a great way about him. And literally you're trying to open a door like you've done a thousand times in the game and you're holding triangle and the, the, and the, the door doesn't open. And he's like, you know what? And as he says that, he just gets a sniper round to the back of the head. And it's horrifying. And you're just like, Tommy, Tom, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh, it's so interesting uh, because I feel like at this point in the game, right? If you've played to this, this you know, the, the last third of the game, yeah. um, especially because it, do, it does ramp up in terms of set pieces, spectacle, and, and again, the violence where, you know, do, do yeah. not do not give me you know a, a molotov um it's just it's not a good idea <laughs> the first time i threw a grenade i never threw one again afterwards <laughs> because i threw it at a bunch of uh, a bunch of humans and it blew this person apart in such a such a brutal fashion that i was like oh god what have i done it was in the, it was in the newsroom the when you go to when you go to the when you go to the the the, the sort of news station and i was like well Leet, my goodness there are people hanging from ropes and you're blowing people apart <laughs> <laughs> who are you and you're so invested in all of that that even it, even though it's getting worse essentially you're just yes. like Let's just get to the end, and then I'm never playing this thing again. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what both characters are feeling the entire time. It's just like, let's just finish this, and we don't have to ever talk about it again. Which is which is very much what Joel was going through in the first game. Which is like, let's just get through this, and yeah, you'll understand. You'll understand how this world works. Yeah. You know. Oh man. Yeah. And it, it, it's. it's how they did it is, is, is like wonderful because obviously the graphics got better um, so yes they added some new gameplay stuff and you're just like it, it it doesn't feel like the first one because of those things as well where yeah you know you're like there's a bit more fidelity and again they they amped up the the action stuff and yeah you know, outside of the the human drama that was going on right there are certain uh, um sections and games right? levels or areas where once it's done it's done you will know yeah. uh, if I can skip this I'll skip this and there were two in in The Last of Us Part 2 where I was just like I, I know I never want to do that again even though I know what's going to happen right I'll, yeah I'll have to watch like a few um, walkthroughs just to be like okay after this this section comes this section, so I'm a core of God. Uh, yes. Yeah. You play as Abby, and you're I think you're at a hospital underground. Oh goodness. Yeah, that My one was terrible. God. And then the apartment building at the top, we have to cross that sky bridge, made up of oh yeah, of flimsy. I don't know what it was. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like makeshift bridges. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Oh man, uh, there's a. I think that the, the the idea is um, the human the human being only has two mm -hmm. natural fears, correct? Yes. Uh, uh, loud noises and the fear of falling. Right. So <laughs> yes. You're not afraid of heights. You're scared of falling. Everybody yes. has that. So. Yes. I remember getting on that sky bridge and thinking, "What am I doing here?" How did I get to this point? <laughs> I'm asking, what have I done with my life? I'm asking Abby. I'm, asking, I'm like, do I really want to? Yeah, you know, I, I can. I can still feel the tension in, in, in my knuckles, and you know that that 
you know, you know, like in in movies when somebody goes underwater, you hold your breath out. Oh well. yeah, yeah, I do yeah. that all the time. Yeah. So just one of those, just like Abby, don't you, you concentrate, you concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did, because you see that that chaos brain of mine. The one point where I think it's close to the edge, just before they fall through the windows um, into like the pool, um, you, you got to kind of balance on this little thing. And I was like, are they just getting me to hold forward? Like this is a Call of Duty game, hold forward and push X. Is this just it? Is it that I'm just kind? Is it just kind of on the rails? So what I did was, is that I kind of, I, I kind of just moved the controller slightly and Abby fell. <laughs> Abby fell horrifically. <laughs> and I felt horrible for doing it. I was like, who? <laughs> but here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing though, Charles. I will say this. I'm, I'm currently watching the new season of The Boys. And I had tapped out of The Boys from last season because I felt like, um, they were kind of running in circles and the show was getting diluted and it's a bit of a it's a bit of a, a side quest that we're going on for a second but one thing that I'm, I'm really getting frustrated with with that particular show is is that it's starting to become a lot like sort of torture por porn or like gore porn and you know it's, it's the, the the stakes are, are are getting mixed up and fuddled and focuses are shifting away from characters which I think uh, you know, are better suited to lead that show in favor of, you know, I, I just don't know, like uh, sort of audience pandering, I guess. Yeah. But what I've started to notice about that show particularly is the amount of violence um, sort of exerted against men, particularly. And I'm like, this is strange because it, and, and when it is done against men, it's always comical. You know what I'm saying? Which, which I wouldn't, the, the biggest problem that I have about it is, is that it loses its teeth that way. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it loses the impact of what the violence is. And you know, Melissa and I have been talking about, uh, you know, this, the Anthony Starr and you know, whether or not he, he and Homelander, you know, deserve sort of like a hall of fame, you know, frame uh, in terms of great villains. And I said, the problem with him is, is that although the actor is doing the work, the story is working against him in the sense that even though he's committing these extreme acts of violence, uh, it, it appeals to some sort of dark id or like lust that people have. So people are actually living vicariously through him. So it's never a case of being shocked by what he does or being horrified by what he does, but more so being intrigued and titillated by what he does. So it's 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 this idea that it, uh, people are living vicariously through the acts of Home Ladder. So he's acting as if like anybody would. And and for me is that that doesn't, it doesn't hold up a mirror to anybody and it doesn't do the the actor or the character any justice it doesn't make them memorable and conversely with the last of us i thought it was so utterly brave you know um to have these heroines go through so much suffering and at the end you're you're faced with you know and people can argue with me but i would say two fully fleshed out very fascinating characters and you f you feel conflicted about how you feel about them you do it's not like you like either one of them and, and and although you might be partial to one of them other than the other you find yourself in the state which you are different than when you started playing the game and i think that that's a great marker of any work of art is is that it it changes you somehow and it and it asks you certain questions about your participation or even your your spectating of particular violence which i think is so much different from like something like the boys which i get is, is supposed to be like a, a send-off for be satirical of the superior genre but i just think that it plays too loose and fast sometimes with certain of its elements whereas the last of us really you know uh, drives the hammer you know, onto the elbow, if you don't mind me saying that, you know. Uh, I actually agree with you in terms of the boys. Um, uh, it's, be it's become a parody now, as opposed to the commentary that it had. Yes. Um, uh, I didn't really notice the commentary until, you know, uh, you, <laughs> you, 
you're almost done with season one and you're just like wait a minute oh i see what's happening here it's 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 what i like to 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 think Zack snyder wants to do right <laughs> but it's gonna look cool charles it's gonna look cool <laughs> And, um, Sorry, that's my terrible Zack Snyder impersonation. <laughs> no, he, he deserves that. Make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my goodness! I look. I like the guy. I like the guy. Uh, he's a. You know. You know what? Like these films are uh, just these visual feasts. Yeah, um, you know what's nice yeah. about like the directors and movies? Yeah. And, like once yeah. they've got them right. So. Right now, I'm like, nah, nothing. Come on, bro. Like, let's yeah. talk about this. I can't do this anymore, right? However, you know, I've got two Zack Snyder films that I can always go back to and just be like, yeah. leave Zack alone, man. Yeah. He, he, he made that film, man. Leave him alone. Yeah, I do the same thing. <laughs> I do the same thing. For me, for me, it's uh, Watchmen and Man of Steel, funny enough. Oh, okay. It's Dawn of the Dead and Watchmen. Yeah. Yeah, because Watchmen for me, I was just like, oh, because, you know, I, I, I literally read the comic book off of those trailers. Uh, I saw the trailers and I was like, I need to study, you know, <laughs> you know, and I went back and I did those things. And, and you know what? It, you know what it is? Um, here's the thing. You know, um, uh, he requires a great screenwriter. That's all he needs. He's got everything else taken care of. He just needs a great screenwriter. Yeah, that's all he needs. He needs he needs to pair up like as much as um, I forget who the screenwriter of Argo is, uh, Chris Terrio, if I'm not mistaken. The screenwriter of Argo did a pass on Batman v Superman, and Ben Affleck actually brought him in to do a pass on Batman v Superman. But he's not a good fit for Batman v Superman because he's a good fit when he works with Ben's sort of socio political thrillers like Argo. Or like Gone Baby Gone, or like something like that. The same way that Mark Boll, when he works with um, uh, Hurt Locker director uh, Catherine Bigelow. Bigelow. Yeah, like you know when they do Zero Dark Thirty, because Mark yeah. Boll is very like a military type person, so he's a great fit for that. I'm not saying that 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 writers have to be pigeonholed, but the problem is is that that I like much in the same way that David S. Goya working with Chris Nolan gives you the Dark Knight trilogy, right? along with Jonah Nolan, right? Or the, along with Jonathan Nolan. Um, and I made this comparison when you look at some, something like Tenet, right? I believe that Tenet is, Christopher Nolan is most ex, uh, experimental and his rawest form of who he is. And as filmmakers, you always have to surround yourself with people who can interpret your vision for you. And I think that Jonathan Nolan and David S. Goyer are great interpreters of and great collaborators with Christopher Nolan. And when you see, for instance, you know, he does something like Dunkirk is really where Christopher Nolan, you know, pivots from what you think he is. Uh, and then you get to Tenant where you get the rawest form of who he is. And then that raw form gets to, uh, refined and you get something like Oppenheimer. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's, it's these, are, these are stages that directors go through. And I think with Zack Snyder, the thing if with him unfortunately is is that anytime he does story he does himself a disservice now i don't critique him for writing i think that every director should write but i think that he needs someone to interpret his vision for him at this current stage well, that makes a lot of sense yeah it's, it's just yeah. that's what i feel because i watch rebel moon both parts and i was like he has something here but the idea is uh uh uh, it hits you over the head too hard and then it gets lost in the details um, somewhere. It, it almost kind of like, you know, it disappears like a particulate into space. Um, and I was just like, it's a shame. It's a shame because I'm always trying to champion, you know, filmmakers. I always, I, I never want to hate on something. I, I hate, I, I hate that capacity of mine. And so um, that being said, um, you know, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's a very similar thing even like with Neil Druckmann, with The Last of Us, right? Because I know he took a lot of flack for The Last of Us Part 2, which I found very fascinating. Uh, you know, after I finished The Last of Us Part 2, right, and I, and it was such a, I'm not going to lie, I enjoyed this moment. Um, you know, it was a sense of accomplishment, right? Because 
I was like, one, I was not expecting that, that game. I was not mm -hmm. expecting that. Like, wow. So even the ending where it just, you know, I, I, could, I didn't have commentary yet. Um, and it wasn't like the, the first one in that the game was so surprising and so good that mm. the hype train lasted until many, many months after the game. It's, it still exists, I believe, yeah. yeah it still yeah. exists, yeah. So, you know, the, so with the Last of Us Part 2, there was obviously this hype train that was coming with it. And again, that, that, that blackout that I, I, I did, um, it, it felt like, you know, I went on a personal little, um, what, do you, what do you call it? You know, like when shamans go off into the desert to do stuff. Yeah, like a sabbatical almost. Yeah, yeah there we go. There we yeah. Go. And, you know, it, it, was, <laughs> it wasn't the most comfortable sabbatical. Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> um, but that, that sense of what, what just happened, right? And yeah. I had no noise coming from the outside. So when I eventually did decide to, to see what um, the rest of the world would say, um, I, was, I was like, really? Controversial. Yeah. I'm like, no, it's The Last mm -hmm. of Us. Like, did you not play the first one? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can you can see the, the, the themes are still there. Right? Yeah. And I mean, they, they did um, what what uh, Game of Thrones does well first. first yeah. They're like, oh, I like this person. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How? <laughs> uh, remember Jesse? <laughs> oh, shit. Right. You mentioned the, 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 the Latino guy. I mean, oh my goodness! Like they were so door. ugly, Charles. It was so the ugly. Door. He's running, bro, and just like <laughs> Jesse, how? And I'm like, I'm like, you guys just Steve Yuned us. Like you, you <laughs> literally, you literally just made us like, you know, this brilliant, brilliant character for me because he's so fucking cool. Sorry, you know, we haven't cursed this entire podcast but <laughs> you know what i'm saying like yeah and even the the voice actor's delivery is so interesting i'm like huh he's gonna oh, make it like he's gonna make it and then you know, literally he walks through the door and gets one to the face man they dangle this bait so well where you're like um Who's this guy who's been chasing him? Who's this other survivor, right? Who's floating around, right? I remember those yeah. little whispers from like the NPCs. And yeah. like, okay, who is it, right? And I'm like, but George is already gone. So this part of the trailer, when does it happen? Is it a flashback? What are yeah. the cases? And then it's the review of oh, it's Jesse. <laughs> so you're like, oh, are we gonna, are we gonna play as Jesse as well? Um, Okay, I, I, I see them trying to fill this dynamic here. You know, somebody got, got to look out for Ellie. Yo, man, all right, cool. And then you find out about him and Dana. And you're like, all right, cool. All right, everybody, let's go home. You know, Ellie, you can do the revenge thing later. You know, and then <laughs> right out the theater. You're just like, unbelievable. Yeah, because yeah. because because what you just said there now you've got me thinking. I want them to release the Jesse cut, where you <laughs> where you play with Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> it's like justice for Han and justice for Jesse. <laughs> like let's get it done, man. Oh man. Yeah. And, and again, like you know, you you don't even have time to, to kind of sit with that, right? Cause yeah. There, there's there's Abby. Yeah, because Melissa was even like, they killed the sexy Asian guy. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, they killed the sexy Asian guy. <laughs> and you were like, oh, man. Uh, I, you know, you're at the point and you're just like, I don't, I don't know what's going on anymore. Um, I'm going just, to just keep going. I really don't know what's going on. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, you, you play it as Abby, so you're like, okay. Maybe just move on with your life, right? <laughs> but then you also play uh, Ellie, and I don't know if you remember Noreen. Noreen, Noreen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. Yes. Yeah. So, so she, she's the one in, in, in the hospital, but then I remember noticing her in that scene with Joel, where she kind of just like pistol whips him, 
when they were straining him. Mm. Is it her? It's, it's, either, it's either Joel or, or Ellie, I think. I think it's Ellie, either one. But you yeah. see, like, she's just like, quack, quack, quack. And I'm like, yo, that's violent. Leave <laughs> my characters alone. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm invested. Yeah. What are yeah. you doing? That's unnecessary. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then that thing happens. So now you play as Abby, and you're like, okay, Abby, move on, you know. And then they make you play as Ellie, who's on this warpath. And you're like, mm. at some point, these two are going to have to square off and end this again. The way yeah. Ellie keeps going, you know, you know, she's, 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 um, what's that line from 300? Uh, blood, blood trunk. Yeah. 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 And she is just, but then you hear about Noreen and inside I'm like, yo, Noreen. I did not like Noreen. <laughs> <laughs> and, right? And then, I don't know, they, they kind of dangle this other bait, right? It's, it's not like the, the Jesse bait. This is more like um, Mass Effect, you know. The, the, it's the, it's the, Nora. The, if I'm up, it's like it's Nora. Nora, Nora. and Noreen. Nora. 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 It's Nora. Okay. Nora. Thank there we you. go. You're right. welcome. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm picturing it in my head and I'm like, I know exactly who you're talking about. I just needed to make sure that I put a face to the name or name to the face. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like the, 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 the evil and good path in Mass mm -hmm. Effect, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, huh. I mean, in hindsight, I'm looking at this going like I'm, I'm empathetic to Abby in certain situations. But yeah. with Ellie, I'm like, yeah, I know Ellie you know just take one more you know they, they must they must hurt <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's so brilliant about the game because the first half of the game you're thinking that you're like you're like can't wait to get to abby i can't <laughs> wait to get to abby and then once they do the switch and you start seeing the freaking trail of blood you left behind you're like i'm embarrassed because uh, you, you have to face yourself you're like because they do all these like little meet cute moments with all the characters where you're like, oh, and like, especially the dog where you're like, oh man, that dog better fetch that ball nine times because it's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to die to a switchblade. Then the, then the poor pregnant lady's going to get it. And then the ex-boyfriend's going to get it. And then like everyone's going to get it. And, and, that, and here's the thing though, right? because <laughs> so so um i haven't watched the making of documentary and i've saved it i know it's on youtube somewhere and i and i really want to get through it um but i remember um i kind of when i was in that denial phase of like i'm not going to play this game i watched like the first 15 minutes of it and it was interesting because i looked at the comment section and a lot of people were accusing neil Druckmann of of sort of pandering you know to to sort of like feminine wiles and to like i think a book called the feminine mystique and this idea of you know sort of the you know like it's the sort of postmodernist feminism or like neo-feminism that you're that you're seeing in a lot of content that we consume these days you know where they kind of fridge the they fridge the male characters in favor of the of the female characters or you know sort of you have beta male characters instead of alpha male characters you know going up against kind of alpha female characters and things like that and I was curious about this going into this game because, you know, having seen so much of this stuff on Netflix and on every other platform, I wouldn't say that this that this game fits into that space. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that 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 um, it does it does that. I wouldn't say that in actual fact what it does is is that it actually speaks about this idea of like just dark, violent human beings and what we're capable of. And this is the the real point that I want to get into, Charles, because in playing this game as Abby, this was fascinating for me. Because when you start off in that stadium, you start hearing about the scars, you know, you start hearing about like all of these, you know, this fringe group that stay on an island and they worship a prophet and da 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 da. And you get Abby's bloodlust for them and like her hatred, and, and it's really bigotry is what it is it's it's a it's a it's a bigotry that that that's that's inherent in in that in, in that society 
that they hate these other people who's in close proximity to theirs. Uh, and then you've got Abby also on the sort of hate trail, you know, um, you know, willing to do violent things to whoever's in her path in order to avenge a father that she denied, right? Um, and what's interesting about it is you leave that stadium as Abby and you immediately encounter what she calls the scars, only to later find two quote unquote scar children, which constantly remind them that they call, remind her that they're called seraphites. And her character starts to change. And there's a line in there that really stuck with me where it's after, um, it's at Isaac. If, I, know, I know you mentioned this to me in that parking lot conversation played by Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I know that you said you, you loved, you, 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 you loved the portrayal of this particular character. And I paid special attention to that because you said that, but it's where Isaac finds Abby and she's protecting the two kids. And I think they had just shot the one. Right. Yeah. And obviously Isaac gets killed by one of the other kids. I forget her name if I'm not mistaken, right? And they kind of pump her full of lead. And there's a very crazy scene where you have to go up against your, your sort of ex community, right? Yeah, yeah. And Lev says something to her where, where she says, but these are your people. And she says, no, you're my people. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm like, interesting. And here's the thing, um, uh, Charles, because Neil Druckmann in this documentary, I know that I'm making this quite long. He said, I wanted this game to be about cycles of violence and particularly I based it off where I came from. Now, Neil Duck Druckmann, obviously born in Israel, right? Yeah. Born in Israel, um, moved to Los Angeles, became a game developer and all of that jazz, right? I felt, and this is what I said to Melissa, constantly playing as Abby, I constantly felt that this was a commentary on not only that conflict, between Israelis and Palestinians, but with every other type of conflict between humans and this idea of that we become quite tribal, right? Which is just like the, you know, there's this, there's this great quote that says that the first casu casualty of war is the truth. Yeah. And I constantly got, got reminded of this and there's such, there's such interesting allusions to this, right? in terms of this conflict. And I want to get your thoughts on that because there's one more point that I want to make is that it's fascinating that Abby becomes the Joel to Lev in the second part of that game, even to the point that the second to last sequence you see in the game is Abby carrying Lev over a hill, much like Joel carried his daughter in the first game before she got before they encounter the military and i was like hold and even the silhouette is the same because they've shaved abby's head she's yeah. she's slightly yeah. smaller and she's yeah, he's easy. yeah and it and it and it's so fascinating to me because it's like the 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 the, the parallel i felt that Druckmann was trying to draw was like you're killing the th you're killing the person that you're trying to avenge, and that's his. I felt like that was his commentary on this on this thing, and you know me like I I very much I like people based on their outlooks, whether they're athletes, actors, or whatever, and if they particular uh, you know sort of political leanings or whatever are different from mine. It's not that I outright hate them. It's just that I'm quite disappointed in the, the manner in which they think. And the interesting thing about The Last of Us for me in, in wrapping up this sort of comment and statement and question is, is that it asks you this question, like your perspective on the, the sides you choose and the tribes that you as assign yourself to, is that informing how quickly you would be to violence much like Ellie or Abby would in these circumstances without greater context you know uh, I don't know what you think about that it's a it's a very it's a very crazy uh, little diatribe yeah okay. I, I, have, I have two thoughts on that John, at the moment. 
start with the first one because um, you mentioned that um, they be, they're becoming tribal, right? Uh, or we become tribal. Um, mm. If you pay attention, I can't remember which season it is in Yellowstone. Um, how much Yellowstone have you seen? Uh, I've seen up to season three. I'm saving season four and five because I'm just like, they're the last ones. And my goodness, Yellowstone is it's a wholesome, wholesome, nourishing. Um, <laughs> Okay, so now in Yellowstone, there's a conversation that um, Kevin Costner's character has with uh, his son, I think, or his grandson. I, can't. I think it's his son, after his son's supposed to take charge of stuff. Um, and they're busy organizing the, the new sheriff of livestock. Or I think it's sheriff of livestock? Yeah, Committee I think livestock you're right. Committee yeah. Commissioner. Livestock yeah. Commissioner. Livestock yeah. Commission, that's it. Yeah. That's it, right. So, um, government is getting involved, politics are getting involved, and the speech that he tells his son or the story that he, he, he leans in, into is that um, there was a study that he read, um, I think a long time ago, um, where scientists would go to these um, indigenous uh, living people, you know, tribes, who, who don't have a lot of access to the rest of the world, right? Yeah. And they would observe them and for like years, decades, the thing was going on. And what these scientists noticed is that every time a tribe grew to more than 500 people, a government would be formed, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then if that tribe grows any bigger and there's the smaller surrounding tribes, the bigger tribe will take over those other tribes. You know, that's. That's pretty yeah. much the pattern of how we've come to this part, right? At some point, obviously, uh, the smaller tribes learn to use the rules of bigger tribes against them, which is the lesson that he was trying to um, yeah. give off on to his son. But yeah, what was interesting, what I realized is that, yeah, no, 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 we're always going to be tribal, right? Mm -hmm. you, might, you, know, you might add something to your skill tree, but baseline, tribal, right? Uh, which mm -hmm. brings me to my, my second point with um, how, you know, when you, you play as Abby and there are certain uh, sections where I, I really felt um, concerned for her, right? Cause yeah, because she feels history. hunted. A lot of the time she feels hunted. Yeah, and mm. in the beginning of the game, they set her up as also this kind of tour de force, this, this, this driven, you know, capable killing machine essentially because mm. that's what she was right you see yeah. how like <laughs> i don't know what they do with their character design but yeah you know a, a woman built like an ox yeah right? <laughs> i love that line by the way <laughs> so yeah. early on that's what happens and then you and then you meet the scars right and it's like you said that the, there's a bigotry there and mm -hmm. immediately now my bias for abby kicks in you know you yeah. don't even notice it at first now you're just like I don't like these people. They're being rude to Abby, mm. right? And then they obviously show uh, um, the scars doing what they do, right? They're not exactly <laughs> friendly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, it's it, you're right. You know that that feeling of being hunted immediately makes you go, okay, who who's, who's my people? And in this mm. situation, obviously, it's, it's interactive entertainment. You're playing mm. as Abby. You're like, all mm -hmm. right, cool. And I remember this one section with them, um, what do you call these containers? Um, yeah. Where there was a ton of these scar people and I just was not in the mood, but you're playing as, as Abby and sometimes, you know, if you don't time your, your if you don't path your path correctly, mm. um, you know, some of them sneak up or grab oh. by the leg and you're just like, oh my goodness, I really don't like. These, these people <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> right and you do that with both you know you know with, with abby and ellie uh, throughout the game where it's like i, I choose this bias now it suits mm. me right yeah now it suits me perfectly and you mentioned neil Druckmann, and i remember when i discovered that he was born um uh israeli and mm. i was like oh how is this gonna play this out yeah yeah, yeah. Because at that point, I've been a fan of Naughty Dog since the Nathan Drake series and Charlie yeah. stuff. And I'm like, yo, this is, this is incredible. Who made this stuff? 
Yeah. So, post the, the post me finishing the game and then checking out all the comments, and you mentioned that there was controversy. You got a lot of flag. Mm. My bias kicked in. I'm like, mm. did you not see what he just made? Yeah. And yeah. You know, I Because I, I I literally I literally approached the game. You know, given the context that we're speaking about this and given the context of what's going on there, I pr approached the game very reluctantly uh, on that note, but also very much like the head in Rick and Morty, which is show me what you got. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he, he got shifty. He got shifty with it. Um, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just want to lighten the mood a little bit because, of <laughs> but yeah, go on, go on, go on. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I think with, with what you're saying, a, a lot of it I, I agree with, and, and mm. those are the reasons why. Mm. You know, it's like, um, it's, it's, not a, it's not an easy conversation for most people to have or want to even bring up. Uh, but then you're like, this is how I would approach it. And it's those things where it's like, you know, I actually... I got a, I got a bias towards this. One. I don't care what your beef is, and it's and, and it's so nice what you, you that line that you brought up with Liv and and, and Abby. It's like you're my people. And it's like yeah, oh, like yeah. I mean, she it's did, a beautiful she did moment, job, right? But mm -hmm. you're, you're very much invested in Abby and Liv and the sister. You know, yeah, you're very much invested. And you're like, how did that yeah. happen? How? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah, and here's the thing. I mean, you know, um, just to kind of to wrap up in, in terms of this conversation and kind of put a bow on it. When I got to the end of that game, um, especially when when you click back into Ellie, because you know you get to the Santa Barbara stage and you, you get to this point where Liv and 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 Abby have got a good rapport with one another. You reach the house and then Abby gets attacked, and I'm just like, oh no. Yeah. Right. You, you you know that it's you know the investment has has hit pay dirt because you're not empathizing with this character, and then similarly when when they go back to Ellie and Tommy comes to visit and you see the scars of what this revenge spree has caused, especially on Tommy, you know with like you know the damaged eye, you can't walk anymore. You're just like oh no, and. You're starting to see that that although maybe the gameplay mechanics is fun, this story has consequence, and cycles of violence have consequence. And I have utter respect for uh, Druckmann and his team for doing that, because it's such a great commentary to make, especially within this context that we're talking about it. But especially so that once you know, sort of you get to the end and you find Abby on that crucifix. Yeah. It, it's, I, I had actually laid the controller to the side by that point because I didn't want to have an active part in whatever that dynamic, uh, however that dynamic had to play out. And I was hoping like, I was literally in my mind saying, and this is kind of when the silence started to set in with me. I was saying in my mind, like, don't do it. Like, don't do it. And I was like, you've, you've done it. Like you've done it, Naughty Dog. You've gotten me to the point where you've gotten me to care about both sides. And the, 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 the commentary has worked in that you're talking about, it's from whichever perspective you're looking at it from. And whatever sort of uh, uh, echo chamber or myopic point of view you're looking at a conflict from, that then colors your bias, as you so beautifully said. And the crazy thing about it, Charles, is like even though they have a fight scene that follows that, where you're playing as Ellie, do you know that, for instance, I actually took my hands off the controller? And then the game makes you pay for it because then Abby just kills you, right? <laughs> and, but I was like, oh, interesting. It's, they're fighting to the death, right? Like from Abby's point of view, they're fighting for the death because she's not the active point of view or participant that you have currently. So you as a player, there's a dissonance in terms of you with Ellie, you want her to stop. You know, it's, it's so funny you mention that um, because the silence, when, 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 when 
when Ellie is basically edging her on, like, yo, let's do this, we have to do this. And you're like, I'm 100% with you, let it go. Mm. And just leave her alone. And at this point, you're just like, you know, Ellie, enough is enough. <laughs> yeah. And then she, she threatens, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, with the knife. Yeah. The switchblade. Every yeah. Point. It's like, oh, man, really? <laughs> really? Right? And Put so that you, murder weapon away. <laughs> <laughs> and you go through that, that, that whole ending sequence and Ellie's left there in the water. Uh, yeah. The boat is, is, is also going away and you're just you're like, uh, you know what? You know what? I am. I am. Okay, wait. Let's, let's see how this finishes. Right? <laughs> yeah. And and uh, Ellie goes back to the farm. Mm-hmm. To Jackson and the house. And there's nothing. Mm. Right? And like, you know, part of you is like, well, what do you expect? And the other part of you is like, I mean, chin up, you've come this far. Mm. <laughs> it's just, right? And obviously now, you sit through the credits, you know. Uh, you cry like a man, and uh, <laughs> like and Ben Stiller in something about Mary, just walking down the road. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, and this for me was like, yeah, that's when silence really came. Like, what just happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's the thing, you know, you know what's crazy. Um, I probably said yes the thing a couple of times during this conversation forgive me because there's a lot of things and I need to say them <laughs> the, meow. Th- meow I need to say them meow uh, <laughs> the, um, the film that made me feel this way most recently is Civil War I don't know if you've seen it Alex Garland uh, no. give, it a, give it a watch I'm not going to spoil anything but it also talks about this this idea of cycles of violence and modes of perspective because it also makes you feel so utterly uncomfortable with it because oh, because you watch it and you're just like uh what that, you know that same feeling that same and when that film ends as well you sit there with like i didn't know what i want i didn't know what it is that i wanted and especially within the context of what we started talking about in, in with in this conversation where i said you know this world is really weird you know given the sort of um an assassination attempt on um uh, ex-president donald trump it's like you watch civil war and you're like oh like, you, you, you just there's this there's this feeling of where curiosity leads you and it is it is this bitter yet satisfying feeling of something inside of you changing uh, yeah. you know and 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 it's a it's a feeling you miss so much because we we consume so much comfort content you know algorithmic you know made for your delight content and when you encounter something like the last of us and you have such a visceral reaction to it i can understand why the internet did what they did but it's because they were feeling out loud you know what i'm saying oh yeah you know i i get it and here's the thing that melissa said when she saw joel get killed her exact words were oh man they're gonna burn it all down when season two comes out (laughs) (laughs) she was like she was like people are gonna riot he's like because he's like it's it's like it's everyone's red wedding moment right like people are gonna have that visceral reaction to it and here's the crazy thing is is that we know so many people who who haven't played the game you know members of our family who are just not gamers 
and who have watched the last of us series oh, and i'm and i'm just like ooh, you know the pieces are set well the board is set the pieces are moving and now it's time for war you know <laughs> <laughs> in actual fact this might lead to alex garland's film uh, in so many ways uh, but definitely check that out that's a great uh, recommendation from me do you have any recommendations for me good sir for me to yes. check out yes do you know what happened Okay, yes. So, Civil War, and I don't know if you've heard of uh, Zone of Interest. Yes, I've, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. Okay, all right. Then, good sir. <laughs> I, I raise you. I, I tell you to watch Zone of Interest because uh, Civil War was below Zone of Interest in terms of playlist. So, yes. I watched the zone of interest and this entire conversation I, I think uh, this is the little bit of uh, parmesan you know to add to the, 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 the dish a little bit of chili oh um, so um, I will watch Civil War uh, you will watch the zone of interest <laughs> great well, we'll meet back here and we'll have more <laughs> stories of the games we play oh my goodness <laughs>